Welcome to Disrupt You. This is the show where we'll hear what changes are headed to colleges and universities in all departments. We'll learn what innovation really means in higher education. Welcome back. This is Disrupt You, and I am your co-host, Aaron Boswell. And who are you? I am Dr. York, and let me tell you, I'm really focusing on my handball skills. I've really gotten into handball. Not, I haven't played it, but I've watched it, Aaron, and I think it is my next calling until I fail. I like that you think it's your next calling, and you said, I haven't played it, but I've watched it. I tell you what, can I tell you something? I, I, yeah. I, uh, I watched pickleball once. I said, man, I would dominate a pickleball. Got pickleball, did the whole Amazon, got it, went out there. And I played against some individuals two or three times my age, and they whooped me, Aaron. So, oh, yes, absolutely. I, I got humbled no very quickly, very quickly. Yeah. Okay. Well, you let me know how that goes with handball. All right. All right. What do you, what's okay. on your mind this week? Well, school is going to start soon, right? We're all getting okay. ready. We're gearing back. Students, new students come in, returners are coming back. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. talk about the year after COVID. What does learning look like? It's big. It, let me tell you what, if you think it's going to go back to how it used to be, you're, you're, you're plumb crazy. You're plumb crazy. Plumb crazy. Yeah. You're living in yeah. Narnia. All right. <laughs> no. So, okay. So we, we do agree it's going to be different, right? I, yeah. I don't want to put words in. Okay. We agree it's going to be different in fall. We do. Let's, <clears throat> I want to, what, one thing I would do want to talk about the second half is that how to encourage vaccinations. What does that vaccination conversation look like? So let's put a okay. pin on that for now. Okay. We'll put a pin on that. So we're going to cover that heavily. And how do we encourage it? How, what's that conversation look like? But I'm curious. Okay. So you say it's going to be different. And I assume it's going to be different, not just this year, but for the next 10 years, it's going to be different. Oh, forever. 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 Right. So what does that look like when you say it's different? What does that look like? Well, I don't know, but I think the demand is going to look different. I think that's what's important. I don't know that everyone's ready to hit the ground with this, but I think last year, lots of us in higher ed offered this very hybrid experience. Kind of, they float in, they float out. They, they sometimes did virtual. They sometimes did in person. They got to pick more online classes. I think the demand for that is here to stay. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we as institutions are ready to like commit to that. Cause it was hard. It was so mm-hmm. hard. Right. Yep. I, I just think students are going to want it. And I think, mm-hmm. oh, I, I think the demand is going to be really high for it. Yep. Yep. I, I like what you put out there. It's hard. So I can already see people in arms saying, Hey, this is so hard. It is hard. Let's just acknowledge that it is. And just stop hard. listening at this point. <laughs> yeah. You stop listening. It is hard. So we're not. So I think we both agree. I think we may different in how we execute, but I'm 100% with you. I feel like there has to be numerous options. We think of options. Mm-hmm. That's key. Yeah. When we talk about, I mean, there's all these words for like hybrid or fluid, like everyone has different words for it, but this idea of on ground butts in seats for 16 weeks. There's like eight week online that you can do at one o'clock in the morning. There's virtual, which is like, I watch it on zoom. I agree. Options are important. Options are very important. And I think it helps specifically with the, the making education inclusive, inclusive, right. For all types of learning styles, all times of uh, life balances that people are balancing right now. But he, I got a question for you. Okay. So, I'm a student. Okay. I'm a freshman first year. Mm -hmm. I come to your university, Aaron. First week I go to class. I sign up. I'm like, I'm in the classroom. Are you saying that at any point I can jump in and out from sitting in the classroom to online, to virtual, to not asynchronous. And I can do it. Are you saying I can do that? I think that's like the ultimate goal, mm. uh, but I definitely think from a synchronous standpoint, if you're in a synchronous course, I think the demand for me being able to show up when I, what on the days I want and show up on zoom on the days I want, that's going to be so high. I think that's mm. going to be really, really high. And I, I know that what I'm saying is not popular. I totally get that. But, but I think, I think students are going to want it. I mean, Okay, let me share real quickly two Mm -hmm. quick stories. Number one, I had a senior last year. She had a dream job. She came to me. We got prepped. She absolutely wanted this dream job. She's like, I'm assuming they'll hire me in May. It was February. They're like, we want to hire you, but we have to hire you right now. We can't wait. Mm -hmm. 
literally if it wasn't during COVID where she could join virtually, she wouldn't have been able to finish. She would have had to pick between her dream job Mm -hmm. and finishing her degree. Her Mm -hmm. work was really flexible, said, Hey, we'll give you this conference room. When you got to go do class, you go do class, but we need you here 40 hours a week. And she was like, okay. And she still came to class. She still came in the evenings and worked with her senior capstone group and all this stuff. But she literally couldn't have done that in a normal world. And another student, sophomore student, had a really awesome internship, but they wanted her to be like 30, 35 hours a week, which she would not have been able to do normally. Mm-hmm. However, she registered in the spring so that she could do, she only registered for Monday, Wednesday, and Wednesday, Friday classes. So she came only on Wednesday. And Monday and Friday, she totally joined virtually because then she could work. Like Mm -hmm. she could work in between her classes at home virtually. It just wouldn't have worked without this world. And so those are two little examples. There's lots of other examples, but I think students know that that was a possibility now. Yeah. And I don't know if there's, I don't know. It's like we've opened Pandora's box and I think it's going to be really, really hard to close it. That's just my own personal opinion. So I'm going to push back here, Aaron. I'm going to okay, push back. On I'm going to push back. So first, yes, I think you should be able to switch back and forth per semester. When you, whatever you sign up for on the first day of class, that's what you do for the remainder of that semester. So if you, if you can't go back and forth, because if we are thinking about convenience for convenience sake of learning, I mean, some students are going to just want to say, give me one test. And if I get a 70% on it, I know everything there is to know about philosophy. They, that's convenient, right? So we can't meet them at a convenient sake at building and learning. So that can't be the case. But I do um, agree with you that life changes, right? Life things happen. So yes, if you have to move your sophomore and you go to Denver, absolutely. You, you switch and you can go online or virtual and you can have the same faculty members that you have had, you know, uh, engagement with, and you've gotten to learn. Absolutely. Make the switch. But here's the thing, Aaron, you said you, your example with the full-time job, right? Your first example, full-time job. She, I don't remember she or he, she, yeah. She, okay. She, wasn't able to come to the classroom, right? And it was going to be the thing that holds her back from her job. Aaron, that's not new. I did that when I, in 09. I had a job full-time and I said, I can't come. I have this full-time job. I worked the professor and the professor worked with me. He said, yeah, absolutely. We'll work with you, right? And that's before virtual is even an option, right? That but don't is- you think it would have been easier if you could have just gotten on Zoom? Ease? I mean, at a certain point- Better? It better, I wouldn't have been able to go on Zoom because I wouldn't, I had to work at that time. So I'd still have to work with the faculty member to make like a a very specific arrangement where if you try to mandate it for every class, it just doesn't fit the holes and it's too easy of a slippery slope approach. And I don't, I don't know, Aaron, I'm not there with you, but I do like the idea. Here's, and I want to give you this. What if you take a class, right? 20 students in a classroom butts and seats. You've got a hundred students virtual also in that same exact class. You also have asynchronous students who are taking eight week classes that never do anything live. You invite them. Hey, here's the topics for the whole semester. Anything you're interested in come to. So now you have this class that is, you know, reaching so many demographics. How do you feel about that instead? So my question is, if you're going to offer it Mm -hmm. and you're going to have the virtual students there and you're going to have the asynchronous there if they want to, or the, uh, yeah, the asynchronous there if they want to, but then you've got the in-person synchronous. Why do you care Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if somebody joins in-person one day and virtual another day? Why do you care? I'm going to drop the mic on you right now. I have an answer for you. I'm just going to say this even from a faculty perspective. When I was a student and tell me if this is wrong for you. I would say 50%, if not more, what I took from college was not from the faculty member, was not from the textbook or a lecture. It was from the, all, my peers, the relationships I built that then became professional relationships and whatnot. That was over 50%, at least for me. Was it for you? Well, probably. But if you're um, arguing that you're, you're going to offer a class virtually, you're going to have to make it that for virtual too. 
right? Yes. Like, it, what it are you just be. not doing it for virtual sim? Why do you care yep. if they're going back and forth? Because then they don't build relationships. They're like half in the water on both sides. You either build relationships with those students in your classroom. If you're jumping back and forth, you're just kind of that, I don't know who that person is. They kind of think about at work. You have someone that comes to uh, 30% of your meetings. Are you that connected to that employee? No, you haven't been through the trenches. You don't see them at every single meeting. You'll build a relationship with that person. You need to have relationships. I'm working with a team. And we're only here a certain number of days a week, but not everybody's here the same days a week. So literally that's my life. Like I'm in a meeting, sometimes in person, sometimes virtually, sometimes hybrid. It's just the way it is. And we'll talk about that next week specifically. I think we disagree too with employees, but here's the thing. It's different than working this way, where if we do like breakout, like hopefully you're not just lecturing for an hour. If you've got exercises, we say, okay, get into teams and talk. You want to have the same modality as the other people in your group. They're all virtual or they're all on ground. You don't want this like one person sitting in the room with their headphones talking to an online when there's other convert. No. Except when they go and work in a field in which that's the way they're operating. You have to have a meeting in a room with 30 other people. And all of those people are on headphones having conversations with people not in that room. I mean, sometimes, yeah. Oh man. That's how that's how like that's how my work works now. So why wouldn't we prepare them for that ahead of time? I just I I you are not winning me over here. I think you that's offer it both. Totally and, fine. And you have those exercises built for the different communities. They build relationships within their communities. I don't know. I don't know if you you got me here, but we'll see. We'll see, right? I just I really also believe I know I talked about jobs and career. I think it's an access thing. I think when it comes to access and opportunity, I think we've got students that have things come up more than students who don't have things come up and, and they need the flexibility. And now that they've seen that that's an option, I just think it's going to be really hard to go back. I think it's going to be really hard to go backwards. I think we're putting faculty in a weird position right now. If you're in this limbo land of like, you can do is because especially right now, we still, we're still going to have students quarantining, still have mm-hmm. students isolating, at least for this next year. And um, so you're still going to have to offer something. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to be this weird gray area of like what qualifies and what doesn't qualify. And, you know, a student taking care of their parent or they had to work till 2 AM. They just are having difficulty that day to have to say to a, to have to, ask your faculty for permission to get on a zoom link. I think it's just another barrier to education, another barrier to access. And so I don't think it's just the like success potential. I think we, I think this helps break down those access barriers too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, do lazy students get to sleep in sometimes? Yeah, they absolutely do. But you know what? We're also widening the scope of who has accessibility to get into our classroom in any given day. Yeah. No, so I hate that. That's my, that's my, my last bet on it. You know? <laughs> yep. No, I hear you. I definitely, when you talk about accessibility, I'm right there with you right there. I think the only, we got to figure out as a industry, right? We, we don't have answers. I think the thing we've got to figure out is at what point and what barriers, how do we support individuals without holding back certain elements that you get from that community involvement to make it as seamless and beneficial as possible, right? What does that look like? What is, but you brought up that just now that fall is gonna, is, is even weirder than usual, right? Fall Very is, weird. is super weird. So we're going in. So where we are, every, every university is different. Every university is different. I um, do these like uh, guest speaking things at University of Oregon and they have full mandate. Everyone, every student, every staff, every faculty member, all vaccinated. Got to be vaccinated or see you later, alligator kind of thing. Um, locally, <laughs> they're doc- not the alligators, though. They're the ducks, right? The, see you the, later, yeah, duck. They're the ducks. <laughs> Where we are, we're in St. Louis. We do not have a mandate. We no, you do not have to be vaccinated. We have multiple schools in our city that do have it. So there's this like, it's not even based on geographic location. It's just some schools in the exact same city have completely different um, regulations. So going into fall semester and you're looking, I mean, you are, that's why I love your voice on this podcast. Cause you're seeing those first year students, the first they're coming in for the first yep. time. They don't know what to expect. Right. So what's the, like the climate, what's, if you're reading the room with those yeah. incoming students, 
and then not sure they're sitting their friends that they graduated high school with are going to X university and they have to be vaccinated. What, what are you feeling? I mean, it's really, it's all over the place. So, you know, we're right in the middle of the country. And I think in a lot of ways, we're this like microcosm of kind of what's going on, you know, on the bigger scale. And I, I, we're seeing that too. We've got, we've got people that are like, I do not want to be vaccinated for whatever reason. And then we've got people that are like, I can't believe, you know, you're not mandating vaccination or, you know, concerns about, I don't want to live with somebody who's not vaccinated, which Mm -hmm. could be a valid concern. Or Mm -hmm. I, um, I don't want to go to class if everyone's not vaccinated. I mean, we're seeing this too. We're seeing a huge increase in students saying, I think I need to switch to online this semester. I think mm-hmm. I need to switch to all virtual. Um, and so trying to, you know, really navigate what that looks like uh, because hybrid isn't an option this year, you know, it's, it's a mm-hmm. different year. And um, yeah, I mean, it's so all over the place, which I know is why institutions are really struggling with making these decisions. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, ever I like I'm so glad I'm not the person that has to make that decision yeah yeah so I'd love to we talked about last week I want to pitch some ideas okay so let's get a couple things a couple things uh across board so one we're going to live in a world where it's not FDA approved yet right so it's it's two days we the issue is if you mandate it today there's some legal stuff Mm -hmm. you have the money to you know fight that kind of thing um once it's FDA approved Every university just totally just different. Uh, have it mandated across the board once it, and that's going to come soon, right? I mean, that's going to be a weird timing because it may even happen during the first little bit of, of the semester. So, right for this for this podcast, though, let's say we're not mandating it, right? Our school, X university, right? Whoever's listening, we're not mandating it, but we want students and faculty and staff to get it. What are your? How do we? ask them are there certain ways are there ideas you have to try to encourage that yeah i mean it's so hard um and i do think college students are a weird demographic that a lot of them haven't necessarily gotten vaccinated but it's not because they're super against getting vaccinated you Mm -hmm. know what i mean it's almost like i so i do think there are some things like incentives that could help um you know maybe it's i don't know maybe it's tuition money off you know maybe it's I don't know maybe it's you know they're doing lotteries they're working I mean as Mm -hmm. as crazy as it sounds numbers are going up in the in these states that are doing lotteries so do you do a a lottery for free tuition I don't know um yeah I don't know what do you think I think the financial thing is interesting because companies are doing that I don't know of any university doing it there may be out there but like Walmart like one of the largest, I think the second largest employer in the United States, they're giving 150 bucks. Hey, you get vaccinated. We're not forcing you to, but if, if you get vaccinated, you get an extra $150 on your check. So I think those financial things are interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Here's an idea. Okay. I'm a big nerd. I think I've talked about it on a previous podcast in another season, but I'm a Disney nerd. I, I take my family. It's something that I, uh, I love that I work hard so we can go once a year, every January we go. And they have a thing called fast pass. Do you know what this is? The Disney yep. Fast Pass. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Disney, if you know, so Disney Fast Pass is basically like if you live in a resort or, or you stay live in a if you stay on a resort, then you get three three fast passes a day where you don't have to wait in line. So a line can be mm-hmm. like an hour long. You get a fast pass. Say on this ride, my whole family goes to the front line. Okay. At the end of the day, we're both millennials here. Mm-hmm. Convenience is crack to me. I yeah, am, absolutely. You, I need it in my life. I need the Amazon. I bring yeah, my Amazon food. can have all my data because I'm obsessed with the convenience, right? Yes. Yes. So if we're not getting motivated with, you know, students, whoever it is on the, on the vaccine specific on health, then we sell convenience. We're going to sell them convenience, not the health initiative, right? It's change that story. So if you're vaccinated, upload it, right? To your portfolio, your, not, sorry, your profile or your digital ID or whatever you have. And then guess what? On move-in day, you get to move in fast. You don't have to do the rapid testing. You don't have yeah. to go through this paperwork. You don't have yeah. to do the long line where you get the fast line, right? Do you know we're doing that? I do not. I do not. Do Are not? we doing that? We're doing that. Well, man, that's a great idea. Here's, I'm going to take it a that's step a farther. That's a great idea. Here's one that I'll, I'll even take some heat for this. I doubt we're doing this. So what if 
an event, right? At the like auditorium or I don't know, you have any sort of event whatsoever. You have rapid testing or you got testing things. I, or a temperature check, you know, those temperature check things. We, I would go out of my way. Even if we had 10 temperature check devices, I would only put out two of them. I would make the line as long as possible. So So after a while, you're like, man, I'm tired of waiting in this stupid long line. I'm going to get vaccinated. So the next event I can go straight in. I mean, that's kind of (laughs) iffy. What do you think about that? That's a little hot take. I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe, I mean, from the science standpoint, like, I think we're over temperatures, but I get what you're Uh, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we, uh, where I work, we're requiring weekly testing. Mm -hmm. which I think is an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. So I do think that's kind of the flip. It's like, Oh, I don't want to go for my weekly testing. It's like, well, get your fast pass. Yeah. Like here's, here's how you get your fast pass. But yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I also wonder like, will it continue to work? Like, okay, I don't really care about, you know, new, new class. I'll go through this whole process, Mm -hmm. but then it's like, okay, week after week after week, I'm having to go get tested. It's finally like, okay, I give it. I'll go get yep. the fast pass, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I think you just scratch that itch, that convenience itch. And I would say, how can you, and you think of different ways you can be convenient? Because again, if if you're not mandating the vaccine, there are legal things, that legal reasons are likely one of the reasons. And if you, there's legal lines of like giving things to people that other people don't get. So you, you got to yeah, you know, yeah. consult with legal that way. But if it's everyone gets in, it's just that some people are a little more convenient to get in, man, I would even visually make it seem like it's more inconvenient than it really is. (laughs) Like, man, let's make that line super long. Let's let it wrap around a little bit, man. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about these vaccines, any other ideas you have or any thoughts you have going in? Cause what, we're two weeks away here. Yeah. We're two weeks away. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you are the person for incoming uh, and students, first year students. If it's, is it vaccine? Is it anything else that you're kind of reading the room and you're seeing, whether it be like this hybrid class yeah. or anything like that? What do you? Well, I, I do think there's a, a weirdness around masking right now, masking. Uh, you know? And so I think that's going to be something for us to keep an eye on is um, I think there's almost this from people that are vaccinated. I'm hearing from students that are vaccinated, this like, anger almost about like, Hey, you didn't, these other students didn't get vaccinated, but I have to mask. You know, there was a point in time, at least in our region, not, we didn't mask if you were vaccinated, you know, and then it was, we're now we're back to having the mask on. So I do think there's a weird, that's creating a weird kind of, um, feeling on campus. So I don't know what that's going to, what is that character? I think there's some tension. Do do you feel that at all? Yes. 100%. Yeah. Okay. And I don't, I, again, I don't know from students. That's why I love to hear. This is how I'm feeling. I felt the first time around with masks. I was, I was, Hey, we got, we're doing this community. Let's get together. I see those people not masking. It's health choices. I get it. It's not FDA. Okay. It's your choice. You need to do it, but give it a little bit of time and you'll do it eventually. And then the vaccine, they're like, okay, you have something to fix it. <laughs> so let's get going. And when the mask came back, that was the first time I started getting angry. Right. I said, yeah, mm-hmm. let's just you got the solution right here. Let's just, you know, kind of thing. But so you're saying you're, you're hearing that from students coming back or. I am. And there's just this weirdness around masking now, right? Like when you go to a store, it's like, we, we encourage you. I mean, the word mandate is it's, it's not, it's not as prevalent anymore. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, um, it depends on what County you're in and what city you're in and that kind of thing. And so, I do think there's, I do think we have to watch out for what that, what that weirdness looks like, especially between students, you know, or even faculty and students, you know, is there some sort of like tension there because of who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, you know, and how do we keep that private? You know, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. And it all, you know, it's all going to be this new normal, at least for this next year or so. I'm really worried for this, this semester specifically, there's that tension boils over to like confrontation, right? In those situations, yeah. because mm-hmm. when you were Zoom, it was easy to mute yourself or, you know, just exit the conversation virtually very easy. But when you're in their groom and pride and being called out publicly and that kind of, that kind of stuff boils over, I'm just, let's just keep cool heads, right? Cool let's heads. Let's keep it cool. 
<laughs> cool people. Let's keep it cool. Mask up, keep it cool. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we're talking about the hybrid. I think we got to figure out a, a common ground with this, with this hybrid. You and I have different ideas coming to this. We're going to talk about vaccines and whatnot. Um, I tell you what topic I want to get into, Aaron. It's this. Okay, let's hear it. It's flipping on the other side and talking about employees. Employees. I want to talk about it too. And virtual versus on ground and hybrid. And because most, of, I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that 100% of <laughs> those listening to this podcast felt in that category, the employees in higher ed. Um, which uh, shout out, we're now averaging over 100 uh, listens yep. a week. So, hey, we're that's the first time we talked about metrics on this uh, before, but we're growing. So what do you think? And uh, if next you tell week? your friend, if all hundred of you this week, tell a friend about the podcast, then we'll get to 200 next week and we'll let you know. Absolutely. Man, that's the first sell we've had. We need to start doing this more. We need to sell out a little bit. If your, uh, your university wants to put a, uh, a tagline on here, you let us know. <laughs> we take sponsorships, but next week, I think we talk about the employees right? Yeah, let's do it. What's it look like virtual? I think we'll disagree maybe a little bit there. I think there's some, some areas for, for, uh, debate on, you know, who should be virtual, who should not be virtual and whatnot. What does that look like? What do you think? Yeah, I'm up for it. Let's do it. Thanks for listening to Disrupt You. Have a question for the host? Just send that over to Dr. York via Twitter at Prof D York, and it could be featured on the show. We'll see you next week for another dive into the future of higher education.